Okay, so let's get started. Uh, today I'm going to be taking a look at this piece. Um, talk about the issues with it and what's happening with it and why it's not working. Um, and what is working. Uh, but before I do, I'm going to do a couple of announcements. Yes, yes, it is that time again for Halloween challenges on the community. And this one is really, really fun. Let's talk about it. It's an open illustration challenge, and you must tell the story of a transformation of one kind because of some kind because the, the theme is transformation. This can be centered around a character, creature, or portrait as long as it contains the uh, the concept of transformation. So, uh, uh, the Halloween, it's all about Halloween, so make sure that it contains a level of horror, macabre, spookiness, atmosphere, subject matter, and theme all have to be recognizably Halloween. Um, and you also must incorporate these textures and embed them into the story in some way. So there are texture requirements. It is a challenge. It is trying to keep you on your feet, keep your portfolio um, nice and polished. Uh, so tattered fabric is required, metallic surface, natural foliage, and water surface of some kind. It could be just a puddle. It could be a, a, a water bending monster transforming, something, anything like that. You have free reign, which is why I kept it so open for everyone. So please give it a shot. It's very fun. And the winner gets to sit with me during a critique hour, which I thought might be really interesting to get to know you guys um, and see how you critique each other. And they'll be they'll have the mic as much as I do, um, just like right now. And and I will ask them, what do you think of this piece? It could be the very same critique hour on the 28th where they, where they, where they come in and um, critique. Um, or it could be the following critique hours, um, any of the weekly critique hours between uh, October and the November challenge. Excuse me. Uh, the November challenge might be due like a week before Christmas, December 1st. Um, I'm not sure how I'm doing it this year. I'm not sure if I'll even do a Christmas challenge. I'll just do a winter theme challenge. Because Christmas is a bit iffy because I, like, I don't know how to balance the religious aspect of it with the concept design. Um, so I like to do stuff that's more open and free reign. Um, and uh, especially this year. So yeah, the winner gets to sit with me in a critique hour and which is uh, really exciting because I can't wait to meet who the winner is and what they're gonna submit. I've seen a couple pieces handed in um, already, a couple of uh, 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 concepts and sketches, which is really cool. I can't wait to see what you guys create. So remember the theme is transformation. So it could be an evolution. It could be a character shifting into another character. It could be like a take on uh, uh, a Swan Lake, but a lot more macabre, a lot more scary. I see a moon, I see a silhouette, I see blood. You know, it's half fun, it's Halloween. Um, and it's gonna be due on the 28th, so a little over two weeks from now, which is more than enough time to figure out your narrative um, concept and the illustration itself. I hope you guys have had fun with the, with the theme so far, and I can't wait to see them. Uh, so for today's critique hour, I'm gonna take a look at this piece and, um, hello you beautiful people, been a long time since I haven't told you that there was cancer. Oh yeah, thank you for coming Eric Hezzy. Spooky time, yes. Um, so yeah, this piece, I wanted to take a look at just how far I could push it. Um, and see what the issues are, why it's failing, and in what ways it's failing, and why it's not really working. Before I do, um, I want to pose it really quickly because at the moment the pose is very very plain um, and what I want to do is show you the options you have at your disposal um, that you're really not taking advantage of. So first of all your canvas is a tile canvas which is a mortal sin um, and it's that's right mortal sin is that right um, and uh, and it's really killing the space with which we can appreciate what's happening around her, which is this serene moment of peace. She's kind of like in a meditative state or something like that. And you've constricted the whole room down to a, like a box, literally. Um, so we, we need to open that room up and kind of let the, let the light take up a lot of the space in the upper half and create some space beneath her as well. Um, so before I do that, I want to talk about posing, simple poses for basic portraiture, um, kind of like mid, uh, um, mid, middle shots, shots that kind of show the mid, mid area of the stomach up until the chest or the, or the bust and moving into the head. So kind of like a medium shot, um, where we don't really have a lot of gestural, um, uh, potential, but it, we can do a lot with the neck and I want to talk about that today. 
So a character who is in, so I'm trying to copy, she's in slight three quarter view, who's in this meditative state, whose eyes are closed, she's kind of just thinking about somewhere, the light is flooding all around, um, and I want to just show how we can really take this to the next level with a simple head tilt. And I want to just relax the shoulders. And I might even push this further and just try to get that breach of the chin through the neck uh, edge right there. And just show how she's kind of relaxed her head, kind of tilting it all the way back, taking in all of the sunlight. And I'm just throwing in the neck as well in a tilt. So from the side, it looks a little bit like a character who's really taking in the sunlight and just breathing in. All right, and so I'm gonna turn off the joints and I'm just gonna take a quick screenshot. And I feel like that's a nice head tilt. And I've been doing this a lot in Critique Hour. For some reason, you guys are like doing those head tilts, the, 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 that kind of uh, gesture a lot, so. Um, I need to make sure this is not here. So I want to show you exactly how much benefit you could have from, from even just a small little head tilt, how much you could benefit your painting. Um, it, just because it's not a full body shot and it's something in between doesn't mean that you, you don't have any room to do anything with it. All right, so what I'm gonna do is expand the canvas just a little bit so that we could have space on either side. I'm going to deselect the character as carefully as I can. 30 maybe will work. Okay. And I'm just um, sorry one second there's like a person running around in my house right now and I'm trying to figure out if there's an emergency outside or something no okay so I'm going to try to keep some of the rim light they added because it was really pretty and I'm going to expand this and it's going to be a, a, a project to get all of that perspective applied here, but I will do my best. Alrighty. And I'm just going to try to copy what you've done with the gradient here. And um Just completing what is missing in the background, just so I can get a good estimate of what's happening in the light environment. All right, cleaning that up too. Oh, is that not selected? Oh, it is. It is. Oh, wait. Let me turn off Portia Studio since I no longer need it. All right, so for the color of the background, like I'm not really sure what's happening with it, but she's got a lot of purple in her hair, and you could really do a lot more with a cool background than a warm background. So I'm just going to do that and then bring in a yellow light, like a sunlight behind her to bring that warm sun back um, that you, uh, you applied earlier. So I'll try to kind of combine both at the same time. But at the end of the day, um, your uh, your background really isn't doing much. It's going to be the character doing the most of the work. Okay, so what I want to do is just really go ham with this. So so you know, bear with me because I'm going to try to like throw her head all the way up, and then 
or, or maybe just like something in between what is inspired by the portrait studio reference because it, it's going to be a really big uh, job to try to get it to that type of tilt but I, I, I'll try I'll try but I'll try something in between first so I'm trying to get that chin to, to breach past the neckline so that I could get that overlap and then relaxing the shoulders down because this is a character that's breathing in the narrative is that she's in this moment of rest in between plight maybe she's uh, uh, taking in her surroundings it's just about her reaction to her surroundings um, outside of showing the surroundings so it's just the character herself so what I'm trying to do is capture that moment which is which is a lot of work but if we take it piece by piece, we'll be able to. So first I'm gonna find the nose, make sure the nose feels like it's in that tilt by showing the nostrils. And then the mouth is on a tilt when we're in that intense perspective. You have little tails coming out of the mouth, big no-no. Um, please make sure you look up how to paint lips, how to paint mouths on my channel. It'll help you a lot with getting a read that doesn't look um, this uh, uh, uncanny because adding painting a face that's realistic and then adding those tails to the either end those long little lines out of either end either corner of the mouth makes it so that it's as if this person has like a lizard mouth or something that's what uncanny means is that you've thrown in something that is working with the realism to create a scary result. So you guys adding those little tails, it does not actually make your work look any better. It's actually makes the eyes look, ex I mean the mouth look extremely um, uh, 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 creepy, I guess for lack of a better word. Um, so I'm trying to track down what's happening to the cheekbones. It's gonna take some work, but I believe we can do it. And then, so the biggest thing that's throwing it off is the placement of the ears right now. But we've come a long way. We're actually, her head is starting to move upward slowly but surely. I like the head tilted down too. Um, uh, but she's kind of has her eyes closed and she's breathing in all the sunlight. So it seems like better acting to raise her head upward. It seems like something an actor would do. Whereas if a character was listening, they kind of cock their ear to the side or their head is kind of um is that the right word did I just say cock on <laughs> cocking your ear to the side right like is that cocking your head to the side did I just say the wrong word for that <laughs> I'm, a, I'm I'm my, English is my second language so I didn't grow up speaking English um so, believe it or not. So I, I need to know what I just said was accurate. Is that right? Because it sounds so weird when I say it, if it's right. Um, no, it's right? <laughs> Caulked. <laughs> okay, whatever. You, I don't know what the hell. Okay. Um, <laughs> sounds weird, but it's right. Caulked. Okay. <laughs> um, so, yeah, she's cocking her head to the side. Oh, that sounds so weird to me. And um, if if she was listening for something, and at that point, I would leave her head tilted down. But um, but in this case, I want to show that she's got this serene moment. That there's you know she's not like uh, uh, um, you know like a desperation in her eyebrows. It's more serenity. It's more peace. And her eye and she it does sound like she's all it doesn't look like she's also listening if you can tell now that the ears are a little bit higher I do have to lower the ears um, but once I raise these eyebrows up it'll make everything feel a little bit better because when you lift your head the bangs or the forehead shrinks the bangs shrink with it and we see less of the top of the head so that's why I have to shrink the top of her head down because the perspective as you can see do we see the top of the model's head no so we don't see any of the accessories on top of the head either and um, that's another little tip is that when you are ready to start adding accessories they're great for tracking perspective um, so sometimes do studies with slight accessories added to them maybe like hair and then try to animate or track down that hair 
in that in that scene or a couple of little frames of animation even an animation as simple as a head tilting upward just like that but I feel like her head tilting backward is actually looking really great uh, for the theme that you try to do which is a character bathed in light and then I'm gonna try to um, complete her outfit <clears throat> What am I doing with it? I hate dressing up characters. Um, so I'm just gonna add something like that, and then uh, and then add just some simple lines for the outfit, and then correct the shoulders even more because they still they're still not as um, uh, relaxed as I'd like, but they're getting there. Um, so this is a little bit off, and I'm just gonna relax the shoulders because shoulders again it's these slight little gestural medium shot um, uh, 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 details the shoulders if she tenses her shoulders up it kind of just looks like a character who's nervous about what she might hear but characters that have more relaxed shoulders seem like they're in a safe zone a peaceful zone um, so it gives a, you know it, it moves the plot in that direction a lot easier and that you can do a lot basically is what I'm saying uh, with with slight little changes you don't have to draw a big open gesture which is my way of referring to a gesture with high energy at legs arms everything in motion you can do a lot with a still closed gesture which is a character that's basically standing up or standing still there is still a lot of expression in closed gestures I'm gonna end off the little um, the little wisps in her hair uh, they're a little bit excessive and kind of misdirect the eyes away from the focal point. They're kind of just throwing around. Even a photographer, so you're probably saying, doesn't hair get to do whatever it wants to do and we take the picture? No. Even a photographer, if the hair wisped in the wrong way, has to throw out that shot and get a better shot where the hair isn't distracting. So you are always, even in photography, looking for lines of sight, um, lines of direction, trend lines of any kind. All right, so let me tell you something about showing teeth. You do not paint the spaces in between the teeth for any reason ever at all for any reason. <laughs> Please, you don't need them. There is no scenario where we need to see the space in between her teeth, nor do we have license to do that because we are painting we're not taking photos i understand that a photo shows this detail i get that a photo can see every a camera can see all things whereas a human eye can see one thing at a time so you can't paint as if the eyes are seeing as much of the eyes as they are of the mouth in the illustration you have to pick one of the focal points and if you're talking about a character whose face is fully visible by default these are the rules um the eyes are the focal points um, so make sure you stick to the rules all right and then so um, I don't feel like she needs to look like she's like blowing out air she kind of looks like she is um, so I'm gonna go ahead and kind of cover up the mouth a little bit as if she's just breathing in or slightly smiling she does look like she's pursing her lips um, and that's only because of what's happening in the light up on the upper lip here. And then in a moment, I'm just going to start just going ham on the, on the detailing. So I'm just going to do what I think is realistic, what I think looks good. Um, and this is going to be a little bit outside of what the character, what the artist meant for this character. And then I'm going to take the ears and reposition them because right now they're outside of the perspective. They were back in front view. Um, and I need to make sure they're in that lower angle, which is this way for this one, and this way, oops, son of a bitch, this way for this one. Alrighty, and then just, I mean, there might be low ears, like, you know, those low elf ears, who knows, and then I'm going to tuck them behind the hair. Ooh, long day and then just correct the hair all right any questions so far at all before I 
zone out completely and just start rendering. All right, so you see she's a bit more interactive with what's her, what's what's happening, what's being said about her surroundings, which is this light that's coming in and drowning uh, the character and, and kind of enveloping, encasing the character in this kind of healing light. And I'll do more with the colors. The colors are a little bit lacking. I'll do much more with them in a moment. Because it's three quarter view, I feel like we'll see less of this hair. Um, are you allowed to spend to send in art that has like suicide hanging people in the background? It's not gory at all, but it does depict suicide in a way, I suppose. So the issue with that is that obviously um, my videos, uh, all videos on YouTube have to be um, identified as safe for kids or not. I don't do safe for kids, but um, I believe you get some kind of penalization if you don't, when you're uploading the video, tell YouTube that this video this uh, video has depictions of suicide and gore. So as long as I remember for the Halloween challenge, which I will because it's a Halloween challenge, to um, submit it as may contain content that is gory or spooky, spoopy, spoopy stuff, I don't think I'll get in trouble. As long as when I'm uploading the video, I, um, I indicate that, that it may contain this stuff. So are you talking about the challenge or just in general? All right, so there's the little breeze blowing and I wanna just add a little extra element here because you're dealing with a lot of yellow. So I, I just wanna interrupt that big body of yellow there and just show where the breeze might be taken. No, I'll just make it curl. Um, taking this hair here. All right, <clears throat> so let's start rendering. So all this was just correction and perspective. So remember, when you're studying, you're separating those two concepts from each other. Rendering is different from structuring. Structuring is all about perspective. It's not your opinion, it's science, it's symmetry, it's biology. And then rendering is where you get to have a little bit of leeway with how much detail you add, how painterly you go. Um, all of that stuff is is it's still physics based. Obviously, it's light on form, um, but uh, but you, but it's not as strict as the structural rules of tilting a head backward. Um, all right, so I'm gonna start color correcting first because the skin tone is a bit too orange, and she is kind of in a in a silhouette. So I'm gonna just desaturate the skin tone really quickly just to match the realism and what's happening around. I am going to start rendering the face based off what I think is appropriate for the age depicted. I've got to put on my glasses and uh, just start. So the upper eyelids, when they're exposed uh, or like they, the eyes are closed, they stretch out and because they're always lubricated so that they can function as a mechanism, they get a lot of shine to them. There's a lot of extra little oils secreted in these areas that catch light. So that's why I'm gonna up the value up here. And you guys really, really love leaving the eyebrows unblended. I'm not sure why. I've, I've been doing this for 10 years and not a single time that I ever say, um, don't blend your eyebrows. So I, I don't know, maybe you guys, some of them, you guys are probably new to art and all that. Please blend out your eyebrows. It's the difference between realism and just something that looks really off. It, there's no point in which we need eyebrows that unblended. They, they're they just framing the eyes. They're not really, they don't need their own stage and sharp edges. And besides a sharp edge is language in here. It's a sharp edge does a lot of work. You don't want to throw in another thing that has a sharp edge that isn't an actual edge. Um, and hair has little hairs, eyebrows have little hairs that taper um, and it makes it look like uh, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're fuzzy or they're, or they're um, uh, ble or blurred from a distance. And then for the hair, I'm just gonna raise that light there. And I'm gonna start going a little crazy with the rim light because to really push the effect 
I have to make sure that the plot point that made me tilt her head back, which is this character's drowned in light, I am actually keeping, you know, staying true to that. So I'm using Dodge Tool to get those colors out. And I'm um, trying to get some of that rim light working. And then I'm going to do a little something like that. Maybe I'll lock the layer and try it. So that's the subsurface scattering of the ears, which is required. I'm going to try to do it so that not the whole ear is drowned in light, but just enough of it. And then there's the little hairs on the ears that catch light. But there is also the cast shadow of the head on this ear because she's kind of slightly tilted away so you know she might not be getting all of it especially on the very lower base of the ears all right and then these ears are slightly asymmetrical now so let me just make them more symmetrical and more uh, accurate in the perspective so might need to really thicken that one I feel like this one could could actually be a little bit more tilted away from us let me see if I could pull that off oops something that looks there we go something that looks a bit more accurate oops okie dokie and then I'm going to uh, bring in some of that light just a little bit of extra light that's too much and then grabbing that white and then trying to up apply that rim light that fuzzy fuzz that hangs out on the hairs and the ears. Just try to catch some of that light. In order for us to really pull off this rim light, we do need to darken the background slightly. Just slightly. Um, and we will bring back a lot of that light coming in from the top. So a lot of that light will, will shoot up. Um, so just like that, and then I'm going to keep applying that. So I'm trying to get rid of most of this drowning light for now, because it's it's about you know the, the individual ray as the artist portrayed it, and then it'll give me a chance to show off the rim light. <clears throat> It's about a give and take and um, it's not about you know it's not about staying in this in this really unfriendly zone where we can't see anything again even in photography they'll dim a room even in photography they'll take their time deciding on the best light or the best uh, lighting setup or scenario to make it work I'll try to pull this off with um, dodge tool next Again, don't be cheesy with dodge tool. Don't overdo it because it doesn't look good. Just make sure you understand what, as a tool, it's offering you what it's doing for the painting, or how it may damage it as well. All right, and because the light is coming in from behind her, and now all this glow that's happening here in her lower hair actually makes sense. Uh, but again, because the light is coming in from behind her, what's happening is that there's going to be a cast shadow off her body onto, like off her neck onto her shoulders. Just like that. And then I'm going to darken this a little bit more so this character needs a bit more shadow. 
since we are on the darker side. And then now that I've set up a really general representation of what's happening behind her, I'm going to go ahead and blur the background. Because it really doesn't need any extra detail. Light is, um, it's not really, it's, it's shapeless. Uh, so you don't need to show a body of rays. You just need to show what's happening to the character, really. Um, I'm not happy with that little ray I'd added earlier, but it's okay. Uh, one thing I want to do before I start rendering the head is just deciding on whether or not I want to darken the lower half of the canvas. Um, and I do, I do want to do that. All right, so again, it'll really give us a nice opportunity to show off that rim light everywhere. So to look at what a little gesture did to the entire, like the skill visible in the painting. Um, and it, it's not like you can't do this perspective, it's that you didn't know you had it in your our, our arsenal. You didn't have it in your, uh, uh, options in your mind you didn't really think like a photographer or like an actor and so how do you learn that stuff well you learn it by watching movies you learn it by uh just being a human being and standing in the light go on stand in the light see what it makes you do um it's it's really hard to say exactly where you pick up the knowledge that a character who's being bathed in light would kind of close their eyes and tilt their head back it's not always going to happen like that. It's not the only way to have a character interacting with light, but because you had all this light showing from underneath her hair, you had only the, br the, the bust showing, so you really had to elongate the neck and kind of um, show off that femininity there, that it was just the best option at the time um, to, uh, to, to, to tilt the head back. It was just the option for the, for the, for the thing you picked, which was this character drowning in light. And then I'm going to start being a little bit more picky with radial shades I add anywhere. I'm going to start softening the skin so it looks a little less um, uh, uh, leathery and more skin-like. Because she tilted her head back, the jawline almost disappears. I'm going to try to get rid of this little line right here. It's unnecessary. Don't even need it, you just need a nice clean edge. And then I will just do my thing with the face now. Now that everything's kind of in place, all the colors are matched, everything, and the power outages will be, uh, I'll take precautionary measures for those because I've been having those. And I'm just going to start Basically what the outline of the cheek on one side says that it's a soft transition, so there should be no line there. And there really doesn't need to be shadow on either side of the nose. You, you can do a lot without it. And um, a little bit of, of a crease for the lower eyelid. A little bit of an indentation for the far eye. The mouth really needs a lot more work. I'm going to try to get a more of a reddened shadow color for the nostrils. We really do need them to be a little bit more contrasted for that read. Try to define that cupid's bow, get the shape of the lip out, and then we'll, well, she's wearing lipstick, so we could probably get away with a, a sharper line along the edge of the mouth, and then get the shape of the cupid's bow out. <clears throat> a question about the light. Should this be a silhouette because the light is in the back? Yes, um, which is why I darkened it somewhat. I may darken it just a little bit more towards the end when I'm uh, uh, changing some uh, last minute things. And then I'll add a little bit of a shadow on the nose here and then blend out and connect 
the cheekbone up into uh, the mouth, upper lip, up into the cheekbone and find out where exactly that edge of the nose is. And then if the shadow is coming from the top, it should have a little indentation to the nose. because There seems to be one. And a slight change in the values representing the forehead and the space in between the eyes, which may be an indentation in general between the forehead and the nose, but it still should not share the same values as the eye socket. And the eyebrows in this case, the end of the eyebrows is in the temple, which is under the hairline. So don't force the eyebrows to be visible, uh, even though you had bangs, like you had the bangs, and then you had to show the eyebrows even though they were under the bangs. You guys do a lot of that. You guys set up traps for yourselves, um, and you like force yourselves to show the, 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 the eyebrows even though they would just be hidden under the bangs. And then finally, the mouth, which I'm going to just find a good shadow color for here. And then I'm gonna try to make it look open. And that lower lip sticks out catching light, but you completely put the light in the wrong spot. So you are definitely, definitely, unfortunately painting the mouth symbolically, which is really sad because you have these easily, easy to digest geometric forms at your disposal, at your service um, to, to help you paint better. Um, cylinders are a miracle shape because they make everything better when you start rendering organic surfaces, organic shapes, arms, legs. Everything is a cylinder basically, to, you know, if you look at it right. Um, and then you guys aren't taking advantage of that. You're not doing form studies so that you can catch the cylinder when you see it. Basically see it this way. Even my more, more advanced students in private tutoring, when they come in, I make them do cylinders. Just, I don't know how many cylinders they've done this far. I'm not gonna risk it. I'm not gonna teach a student who uh, has five cylinders in their entire history of art. Uh, even the professionals, even the um, uh, the more professional students, even the ones who are, are just in the field and they just need some critiques or portfolio reviews, do cylinder studies. So take that into account when you think, eh, maybe I shouldn't do any cylinder study. They're so boring. Even the professionals are doing it. Um, so just, you know, do it. You don't really have the option if you want to get better. All righty. And um, so the cylinder right here is catching light from the top. And I will try to apply lipstick once I get the form intact. Um, more than I thought spheres would. Cylinders changed my life more than I thought spheres would. Uh, I think you are tired. What a strange comment. Um, but it is the internet after all, it's the rock, what do you expect it? Um, and then I'm going to make sure the shadow of this lower cylinder is intact right here. But yeah, um, thank you for that comment, Tushar, because you really do notice the way your art changes when you start taking cylinders a little more seriously. And so each lip gets treated like a cylinder, meaning it has a half shadow from the top. I have videos on this stuff, so you can't say, oh, she skimmed over. She spent time talking about cylinders and didn't even teach it. I have hours and hours about the cylinder, so, so go and take advantage of that. All right, so I'm just making sure that everything is grounded on the same perspective lines. And um, I think she was smiling, so I'm gonna give her this very gentle smile. And, um, I'm gonna use some radial shading here. So thank you so much to the artist who posted this today. So I always try to remember to do this. Um, even though I critique the living crap out of this stuff, and even though you guys say it's the executioner's block, and oh, it's, you know, this Iraq's gonna, you know, rip this piece apart, all that language you guys use about me, basically, Gordon Ramsay uh, art. Um, 
by the way, Gordon Ramsay and I are both the same personality type, but um, it, I still want to say thank you to the artist for giving us this educational opportunity. So it, it, it is rough. It is rough being up here, getting your art critique, getting something you spent hours on, uh, um, you know, uh, getting basically destroyed. Uh, but it's amazing seeing the potential of your work. And thank you for that opportunity, showing everyone the potential you know, and, and the the effect, the, the amazing effect having fundamentals does to your work, the amazing effect, the benefit. Um, so you got every time somebody posts something to the Reddit community, they're giving me an opportunity to teach someone something, which will stick with them for life, and that means a lot. Um, and then there are those who, you know, don't really do good with critique, who fight back, who argue back, who find excuses for why they picked a certain thing or why they did a certain thing or, yeah, I meant for that to happen. Oh, that was unintentional. Oh, maybe I should have, but not really. Um, I can't stand people like that. They really grind my gears because, um, they, they don't understand that this is for their benefit and their pride isn't even my concern it's not an attack on their pride it's not an attack on their intelligence uh, people who are so unwilling to get critiqued or, or find it difficult to deal with a critique are people in general um, difficult to hang out with difficult to talk to because they're not making it easy for um, everyone to bridge a gap uh, bridge the gap of communication and be able to you know talk about anything with them really so Again, it's amazing that you guys submit your stuff for critique because it's very courageous to do that. It's very different. It's very unusually like non-human uh, to do that because humans are extremely proud and very and, and don't like being told that they're wrong. And then for an artist to submit their art on a community to get critiqued and they understand the wisdom to understand that it benefits them as much as everyone else. Um, that take, that takes balls and that takes courage. So I've noticed a lot of people in the comments section say, oh crap, the before looked like you know, horrible or the before did this or the before did that. Make sure you guys are using better language um, and, and realizing exactly how much courage it took this artist to submit their art. Um, and I understand, I know I'm, I'm very rough with you guys and I tell you guys stop being noobs and all that shit. Um, uh, but but I, I admire every single person who's ever submitted something for Critique Hour. Those are artists that have benefited from that and are stronger because of it. And those who take critique gracefully, who understand the mistake they make gracefully and don't try to argue back and don't try to um, uh, uh, save face or as if, you know, they were under attack personally. It's just the art. It's just the interpretation. Art has... Uh, so many stages to make mistakes, so many opportunities to make mistakes um, that no one is no one is exempt from it. No one is uh, allowed to 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 you know to, to to preserve their pride. No one is really allowed to keep their pride in the picture. So thank you again. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to make her shirt fuzzy. I don't know why. I just feel like her shirt needs to be fuzzy. Um, so I'm going to try to make it fuzzy so that it can catch some light, which is really fun. And I'm going to make it a little blurry. It just feels like she's wearing a fuzzy shirt, don't you? Like she seems like she'd wear a fuzzy shirt. You know those shirts back in the like early 2000s that everybody was wearing? Everybody had a fuzzy shirt. So I'm going to try to. Every girl anyway. Or, or gay man. I don't know. I have no questions. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> if gay men even think that they're nice. I don't know. Anyway, it's right. Um, so I'm just going to get dodge tool on absolute max and just let that shirt catch some light. Woo! Look at that. It's gorgeous. And I'm just going to do a couple more. That was some biker who drove by my house. <laughs> I'm sorry, I forgot to close the window. It was 78 degrees in New York today, and uh, it was very, very um, hot to keep my window open. Almost done. Uh, how your username, Granny, and you call someone tired? I'm not even going to delete that. <laughs> um, I wrote this because it's very late. I know that feeling from a friend who's great at art and also at critique. Um, yeah, so you, you're used to getting the critique. Uh, what does WIPA mean? I am part of sharing groups where I dare not offer critiques. It will just break other members. 
Um, really, wow. I can't, I can't believe that there are communities where people don't know how to take critique. I can't believe that's still a thing in this day and age. Like if they only knew that critique was part of their direct evolution, um, that part of their like direct evolutionary development, like as a human, as a being, to be able to understand where the, you know, the fact that where you don't know is what you attack in order to know more. It's such a basic concept. It's like Buddhism, uh, the Tao, Islam, all of that is just admit what you don't know and seek knowledge from the cradle to the grave. Like, how do you not know that it's like a basic rule of just evolution of, of being great to just accept critique and learn the mistake. I, I can't wrap my head around that much of that big an ego. Like how can anyone have that big an ego? But it's possible. I've seen it firsthand. I used to have a very naive view on people's, um, you know, people in general. I used to think everybody meant well and whatever, but I've learned better. And I realize, you know, there's people out there who really just will, will shatter their identity, will shatter if they're wrong at something or not good at something, which is something that needs therapy, to be honest. It's nobody's fault but their own. Um, everybody needs therapy. So it's not me insulting anyone. Everybody needs therapy, especially nowadays, especially after Trump. All righty. So um, I'm just going to try to give her body a little bit of definition. So, you know, me, I hate, I hate designing fashion-y stuff. I hate kind of worrying too much about all of that stuff. I'm just here for the light. I'm just here for the, the fun of the light source. So you can keep the background this simple. There's really nothing wrong with it. I think the image speaks um, uh, the, at this point, but let's push it a little bit further. I'm gonna add some bloom coming off her hair. I'm going to add a little bit of extra light just hanging out around her shoulders, just there. I'm going to add a little bit more light just on the top of her bangs where they bend toward the light. And I'm going to use Dodge Tool to kind of push it a little further. I'm going to try to try to cast her in something of a silhouette, nothing too dark because silhouettes are very dramatic and they're very Batman, you know what I'm saying? So you don't want to, if she's drowning in light and she's feeling beautiful and peaceful, you don't want to throw a big silhouette there, but let's see what happens. So I'm going to duplicate the layer, lock it, put it on, um, yeah, lock it and then just throw a big blue over it, which looks pretty really pretty but again I'm into that dark stuff so so you know you don't have to do it but that's why I, it looks amazing to me because it's just my bias and I'm trying to control it while I'm doing critique hour but damn it looks good um so I'm going to erase away where the light is touching because it can't be a complete blackout but I'll, I'll show you where it just looks amazing that oh it looks so good i don't want to make it any dark any lighter but it's okay the artists will choose what they want to do it just looks so good um and then the ears of course need to be relieved of that shadow feel attacked and I'm not about that drama uh i also uh part thank you jessica you're so sweet thank you so much Honest critique is so valuable. I have paid someone honest and get and, and give good tips when I was in art school. My professors were too soft. My work blossomed once I got uh, working. Yeah, um, critique is an artist's workout. Yes, I also part of a few uh, sharing group, um, um, but I don't give critique unless artists ask for it. It's the self-taught mentality that people are afraid to absorb information coming from better artists. It's so weird. It's such a strange, egotistical issue, you know? It's so, it's so weird. I imagine those people are difficult to talk to. That's why I said that. I'm paying teachers for critique. I really hope they give me tips and correct my mistakes instead of vague recommendation. Um, uh, everyone is improving except me. I feel trapped. Uh, no, you, you, you will improve as well. Just make sure you're surrounded by the right community. Uh, but anyway, let me get back to this. This is my high right here. This is where it's at for me. Like, this is the highlight of my day. <laughs> no pun intended. Um, this is where it's 
hats. I'm having so much fun throwing a silhouette over this. But of course it's not, it's not great to do that every single critique hour, but I, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm in recovery when it comes to silhouette. So this is the before. It's pretty. I like it. It's, you know, it's getting the point across. But when you add the shadow, it just looks so pro and so nice. And mm, uh, so it's all up to you. You can do something in between. The point is, is that we can't see her face, but we feel her serenity. Do you know what I'm saying? So you're withholding information about the detail, um, but it's being replaced uh, by her gesture, which was what all, all the critique was about today. The critique was about going in there with, uh, with, with Portrait Studio and making sure that we were pushing the gesture to speak what the face has been trying to say. But, you know, you, we don't only know people based off their facial behavior. We know people based off their body behavior and tilting the head upward and surrendering, surrendering to the light. It's all beautiful. It's all just majestic. So for the, for the final, I will keep it in there. I am, I am sorry if you didn't intend for that, but I, I do want it in there. Uh, I'll lighten it up just a little, uh, not too much, but it is gorgeous without it, uh, with it. And, um, as for the background, really at this point, you can do whatever you want. Um, <clears throat> You could just throw a little bit of light coming off to one side. Just like so. And I'm just going to boost up the light on her sweater a little bit. Um, and if you wanted to, you could bring in some kind of... Uh, 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 um, uh, what, am I, what, am I about, what am I about to say? What is it that I wanted to... I forgot what it was. Forget it. Um, and then... I'm just gonna do something like that. Maybe for the sake of the fashion and the character type, I feel like she'd have a half shoulder sleeve on one side. Um, it just feels right. It's what I, it's the outfit I would pick if I was drowning in light. It was just what I feel like would, would work. It's just the uniform for a character serene with rainbow hair in touch with her uh spiritual side just you know why should you cover the shoulder it's the spiritual shoulder it's where all the spiritual energy is coming from it that's that's just a requirement it's the uniform um and then i'm going to clean up that shoulder a little because it makes no sense at the moment and then I'll just blur it right and highlight All right, um, and then I'm gonna flatten the image, and then what I want to do is just something that adds the effect of this serenity. I want to blur the lower half of the canvas and blur anything in motion. So I'm going to keep her detailed, get her ears showing, get some of her hair showing, but really the rest of it can be blurred. It doesn't need to be fully visible uh, like that. Just a little bit. Uh, more blurred on those empty areas. So it's just about her. Um, she isn't centered, so I would flatten her and then just kind of throw her towards the center. There was no reason to throw her to one side. And now it feels a lot more complete. And all you need is, I can't do the before and after as a copy paste uh, because it is a different canvas size. So, are you guys ready? She looks so French in like a really cute way. Do you think the composition is a little off? It's not quite centered, but not off-centered enough to look intentional, giving it an unbalanced, unbalanced eerie feel, like she's about to be stabbed. Um, so I did move her over to the side, so I'm not sure if that's what you meant, um, but uh, uh, I don't feel like she's about to be stabbed. It might be the dark background. If you really wanted to, you could raise it, but you guys know me, I'm all about that dark. Um, so I don't know, you know, it's your choice if you want to keep it or not. Uh, before, I know, huge difference, very different character, very different illustration, but it's the potential that I saw in it that I wanted to take this to the next level and just go ham on it, uh, like I do with, with you know, with some of these critique hours. Um, <clears throat> it's the shoulder everybody cries on. Uh, so before, 
As you can see, the head was tilted and it felt kind of masculine because that neckline was very bulky and the ears kind of looked a little bit, um, a little bit off, you know, the, the ears looked like they're in the wrong spot. And then after, I know very different painting, but I feel like it's what you were going for and tilting the head back like that is actually doing so much for the illustration. It's doing a lot because she feels like she's drowning in light. It feels like the character um, the theme you were going for, the actual story you were going for, which is eyes closed. I mean, I didn't open up her eyes, and I usually don't take critique hours where it's a full face, but eyes are closed because I like an opportunity to teach the eye. You know, I like to pick faces where the eye is open, but I took this one and kind of went with it with the gesture. You can tell more with the gesture um, and a slight little shift, a slight little, a uh, little shift, just like this, you can do so much. So I didn't go all the way uh, as big as a uh, head tilt back as, as the portrait studio model. Um, but I did it enough that we really did get a lot of that gesture that the closed eyes were trying so hard to depict that they just needed that extra push. They needed the assistance from the gesture to complete the plot, to complete the story, not the plot, but to complete the narrative. Um, oh gosh, I wasn't here for the before. What a transformation. Thank you. Um, the cheesiness. The cheesiness. So let's talk about that. Where does that come from? The cheesiness comes from uh, mostly the lip gesture, the slight, the, the excessive attention to the hair rainbow and um, the, the, the kind of uh, the square, the, the square canvas and the disproportionate feature and the teeth showing. Um, I think that all comes from that. Um, and then the after. <clears throat> Thank you so much to the artist who posted this. So again, this is impossible without the before, without the artist who, who brought the story to us so that we could create this before and after. Um, thank you for being uh, accepting of critique and for being graceful and you know posting your art to the to the community and asking for critique. Um, remember that it is that's the only way to improve is to just. Uh, surrender yourself to this this pool of knowledge, this community, um, and not be a pompous ass who who uh, who argues back every critique, who uh, refuses to accept critique, refuses to even join a community like this one uh, to get the critique they need. Um, and uh, and yeah, it's it's that that's the, you guys are the lifeblood of the community. You guys are what make it possible. Um, and. Um, does full saturation add to the cheesiness? Yes, full exposure also, thank you for that, yes. Full exposure of the light source, both in the front and the back, is all cheesy. Um, the reason why it's not cheesy in her light source uh, silhouette falling on her head right now is that we managed to darken the front. Um, and there was the point where the front wasn't darkened, um, which a, a little bit cheesy is, if, do you see it? Do you see the cheesiness? Um, it just shows more maturity. Uh, noob, ch noob decisions are cheesy uh, because, oh, I'm going to show everything. I'm going to go thr throw the, some glitter and glam and nails and do the hair. And, and in the end, it just looks cheesy. Sometimes reining things back and letting one thing take front of, uh, center stage um, is, is what removes the cheesiness. So you get one light source instead of two fighting each other. Cheesy just means excessive or noobish. Or, or stuff that feels like you're trying to do so much and please like me, please like my art. That's what makes stuff look cheesy. Is that you're using all the tricks in your sleeve, all the pizzazz, all the sparkles. And uh, that's that's a good point there. Hello, oh, okay, Hinkle. Um, so thank you everyone for watching today. You guys are amazing. Um, if you want to be a part of this Reddit community, if you want to improve your art and be more accepting, learn how to accept critique, benefit from critiques, go to istabrak.com and click on the Reddit icon here. That'll take you to our Reddit. There is a Halloween challenge currently running, so please go read it. Um, the winner gets to sit with me in a critique hour and just discuss stuff with me while we critique their work, while we critique um, uh, other submissions if we do it on the Halloween day. The due date for the Halloween challenge is right before Halloween 28th, the last Thursday of this month. 
um, and uh, and we'll be just looking at everything. It'll be so much fun. I can't wait. Um, so if you do want to be in a video call with me um, in, in, in today's critique hour, and uh, and you're you know that's something you feel like doing, you might just get it. Who knows? Try. It's not going to be just the the winners aren't going to be rated just the, you know on skill. They're going to be rated on the idea and the originality and the amount of research they put in, and the amount of effort they put into it and the storytelling. Um, so please go for it. Have fun. I will try to make a video um, dedicated just to announce this community challenge on uh, my YouTube, but I'm not sure if I'll have time for that um, this week and then it'll be just two weeks to do the challenge. But who knows? I'll try my best to make a little dedicated announcement video for YouTube in case no one's you know getting these announcements. Um, and then I will try to make this award um since pretty much everyone has portrait studio now so it's like it's not even a reward anymore everyone has it so i'll try to make this reward that staple reward for upcoming challenges that the student sits with me that the winner sits with me in a critique hour which is such a fun way to meet you guys i don't know why i didn't think of it before um but i'll see you guys on thursday the 14th at 5 p.m eastern time to buy portrait studio sorry before i go just go to istabrak.com and click on the store icon it's currently on sale i will leave it on sale indefinitely until um uh, uh the pandemic is over it's just something i decided to do um i feel like this price is a bit steep for what everyone is dealing with at the moment um and my brushes are also on sale but yeah i'll see you guys on thursday hopefully my health allowing um uh at 5 p.m eastern time bye guys